tell us about the uh, work that you did. Well, thank you for inviting me and allowing me to present uh, my data. Uh, you know, the background for our study was that we found that previous studies have shown the opioid use in migraine was very high and it was associated with uh, disability, high healthcare utilization, uh, progression of migraine from episodic to chronic. So our aim with this analysis of this OVERCOME study was to look at the patterns of uh, use of opioids in patients uh, with migraine or in people with migraine. We uh, were focusing on the subgroup of patients with four or more days with uh, migraine headache per month because uh, this is the most important for us the group and most disabling group of patients uh, in our sub-analysis. Uh, we found that 19 percent of uh, people with migraine were current opioid users. Uh, basically, they were using opioids in the past 12 months. 90%? 19%. 19. Yeah. Okay. And uh, when we looked at a subgroup analysis with, uh, in the patients with four or more uh, migraine headaches days per month, we found that 23 point, almost, almost 24% were uh, using the opioids uh, in the past 12 months. Uh, basically, one out of four. Yeah. Uh, uh, people with migraine were using opioids. Uh, the numbers are striking, you know, um, thinking of, you know, of opioid crisis, you know, it's concerning. Yeah, it's concerning because of the opioid crisis. It's also concerning because, as you said, it, opioids actually are counterproductive in many patients with migraine. Absolutely. I mean, there are some studies that have shown that opioids could uh, induce hyperalgesia in patients with pain and with migraine. And, um, and there are currently available treatments which are more conventional and even migraine specific uh, medications now for both acute and preventative therapy. Uh, so why not using these medications uh, before considering the patients for opioids if there's any contraindications or uh, uh, to this conventional treatment. The majority of prescriptions for opioids uh, came from primary care physicians in our study. Um, I, I can't remember the exact number but it's around 60%. Uh, followed by the pain physicians, uh, general neurologists, uh, emergency room doctors, and then specialists. So uh, here, here we see that there is a need for more education. Uh, we need more education about migraine as a disabling neurological disease, uh, as, a, as a true neurological condition, not just a headache. Uh, as you know, migraine has many other symptoms uh, not only pain, pain is a part of the symptoms. There's a photophobia, phonophobia, there is a, we call interictal disability or interictal symptoms. Uh, even between the attacks, patient can feel some symptoms. So the better understanding, better education about migraine, about available treatments, more mechanistic treatments is needed. And we need to educate healthcare providers, but also patients, they need to know about these available treatments. And that's what AHS and AAN is doing, right, with advocacy and, you know, reaching out to patients and 